What's up guys? This is Hardy from Digital Painting Studio. Today let's continue our four-part character squad challenge. Today we are going to do my favorite character in the series and one that I think is the most important character in a portfolio. I'll go into more reasons about why, but we are going to go about this very kind of hard to pin down but really important archetype. We're going to talk about their place in a squad when you are designing a group. And finally, some tips on how to actually assemble this squad so that everything works together. So lots of great stuff to dig into. Let's dive in. So, so far we have done our main character and our brute archetype. Today we are doing one that I think of as special skill archetype. That's kind of a catch-all term. It's basically an archetype that is just supernaturally good at something, some kind of special skill that makes them an asset to the squad. For this character, we are making a sniper assassin type, but this can take many forms. It's sort of the outlier. It can be a wizard. It can be a hacker. It can be like a cat burglar, some kind of nimble thief or something. This one can be tough to define because it can take so many forms, but let's talk about some examples. Uh, one of my favorites is Abe Sapien from Hellboy. Definitely fits this mold, but uh, I'm taking a lot of inspiration from Gamora for this character, for sure. Uh, another one would be Doctor Strange. Kind of just somebody who has this ability that is different from the group. It's not just brute strength. They're bringing some special attribute to the squad. This can also be a good place to have a really colorful personality, maybe some completely demented weirdo or somebody who's always telling jokes or maybe some extraordinarily dark personality. Maybe this character like never talks or when they do, it's very eerie. Something like that, just something to have a little colorful pop of personality in the squad to kind of balance out the group. One thing that's really important about this one is this is the time to make a character that really fits the genre or universe. So think about those options. Whatever genre you chose, this special skill archetype can be your chance to show a lot about that world. So, for example, if it's a cyberpunk universe, you could make a hacker, somebody who's always like jacked in, has some kind of implant so that they can hack mentally, you know, something like that. If it's a steampunk character, we can make this the watchmaker, some kind of gadget guy who has like steampunk limbs and gears in his head or something like that. You can make this special skill character really emblematic of the genre and the universe. Super useful. So why is this character the most important one in the portfolio? It has to do with her place in the squad and the contrast that we can create. So you may have noticed this, but she is the opposite of the brute in almost every way. She is very feminine versus hyper-masculine. She is curvy instead of being all blocky and angular. She uses intelligence and skill and being nimble and athletic instead of just brute strength. And even the gear, every design choice that I'm making from her equipment, the shapes, down to the details like her tattoos, it's more feminine. There are all these sort of floral, elegant patterns in her tattoos, whereas the brute just had these no-nonsense geometric lines. It's all there to kind of unite these two characters, but also make them opposite. This is really important because as we get to this critical third character, we start seeing the squad take shape. And remember that main characters are pivot point. So 
Starting there, we can go to big and blocky brute, or we can go the other way. We can go to this tall, athletic, skillful, special skill character. It makes this really pleasing three-part series. Things just tend to look good when we arrange them that way. One of my favorite things we do in Concept Art Academy in the first couple of weeks is a rock exercise where we simply design a collection of rocks and once we learn some shape fundamentals we learn how we can put these together in a pleasing way. And in a way this is just a much more complex expression of those basic ideas. Kind of having a starting point then go big and blocky in one direction and maybe tall and skinny in the other to sort of round out a group that looks cohesive with its design language but also has lots of contrast, lots of cool ways that these dynamics kind of play off of one another. Once you have three finished characters, I mean, that, that pretty much, you can call it a squad at that point. We're gonna do one more to make this a four-part squad, but with three, it's starting to look like something, look like a family. So it's time to start thinking about how are these characters going to fit together? And actually, I hope that before you get to this point where you're really painting your third character, you have tried to fit them all together at the design stage. So this is really important. We want to make sure that these characters all fit together. Just they make a nice puzzle piece, a nice composition. Because sometimes if you don't test this out before putting all these characters together, it can have these hilariously unfortunate and frustrating consequences. Like sometimes I have characters with weapons kind of slung over their shoulder. Invariably, there will be some weapon pointed at a neighbor's face, or much worse, crotch. And it's just this really unfortunate thing that no matter what you do, you can't seem to flip or rework things to make that work. So definitely test this stuff out just when it's a sketch. When you have your design finished, put all the pieces together to make sure that it's working. Now, once we're further along and these are painted and we start assembling our squad, we want to make sure that all of our design choices have made the squad look cohesive, but not samesy. In fact, I make a pretty big switch almost at the end of this painting, where I decide that this character needs a little something, an extra pop of color, to make her look a little more different from the brute and the main character. So I end up changing her vest to this nice, magenta instead of just going with the yellow and white color scheme that I did with the brute. So it looks like it's from the same design family. It's the same consistent design language, but it's enough to give it a little pop of contrast. We also need to make sure that our archetypes are working. Did we really make our archetypes clear? So when you put everybody together, does it look like your main character and your brute are sort of the same? You know, did you go too safe with your brute? You know, just make him bigger. Is your special skill character too boring? Do they just kind of look like whatever? You don't get what their job is or their personality. Once you start seeing these things with the group assembled, you can make those changes. With digital art, it's never too late, but it certainly makes things easier when you can catch that stuff earlier. I love how this one turned out. She is super fun and definitely is starting to really round out the squad, give it some complexity, some nuance, and I think it's gonna look awesome together. So we have one more character to paint after this, a really fun one, and then we will have our squad finished. So if you're following along, I hope you are really loving what you do. I hope this special skill character has kind of got you looking at squads a little bit differently, opening your eyes a little bit. So. 
Hang in there. One more character to go and this squad will be finished. It's going to be awesome. I'll be back soon with part four, but in the meantime, good luck with your artwork. Paint something cool today.